here in the the cellar, the the nucleus of the of yeah. the family winery, and here we've got all some of the old vintages. Yes, exactly. Our library, <laughs> my favorite place. Your history, <laughs> yeah. and I mean, Salton is the oldest running winery in Brazil, isn't it? Yes, almost 106 years. Uh -huh. So we started in 1910. And before that, we have been also working with vines, with other, other jobs. But yeah, since 1910, formally, 100% uh, family-run business. Excellent. And you're the fourth generation. Yes, exactly. It was your great-great-grandfather exactly. who came from Italy. Italy. Yeah, from Veneto region and arrived here in this beautiful, beautiful region uh -huh. that you are that now you can you can visit for first time uh -huh. <laughs> and i hope you enjoy it i did it's been lovely <laughs> lots of Wonderful. italian food as well yes, <laughs> yes lots of italian in, uh, influence mm -hmm. in in all the region but yes for for us it's 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 Wonderful! It's just wonderful to to, to be part of four generation mm -hmm. and to be part of 106 years. It's a big, huge responsibility, uh -huh. <laughs> but so good to 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 make it continue through through the years. Absolutely. And what I found really interesting about your family story is that your great grandfather came from a boat uh, or via a boat from the Veneto region in yes, Italy exactly. and sadly lost his wife on the journey or perhaps when he arrived when he but found arrive. a new yeah. Italian wife here which <laughs> yeah. kind of shows us how many Italians had moved to the region Lots at that it. time and that's what kind of started the whole winemaking history here in Brazil isn't it yeah, can you exactly. explain a little bit about what wine was like back then when it was starting and about each individual producer having their own vines what was the situation like a hundred and 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah, so actually we also can mention that Brazilian wine history and Salton history are really mixed. So in, in some parts maybe it, it confuses itself. And for, for us is, or for those people, uh, they, they brought this tradition from Italy. As I told you before, uh, my great great grandfather was there. He, he used to have some vines in in Italy just for consumption, you know, the traditional way. Mm -hmm. And they just arrived here. They found nothing. This is the the the, the, the real situation. They found nothing. And it's and like they a forest here, really. It's it a, was a humid forest. 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 And they had to do everything. Mm -hmm. And of course, they also brought this tradition, because it's a real, tra a real tradition, to drink wine from Italy. They brought mm -hmm. that. Of, uh, it, uh, we had nothing here, so they had to develop their own, their own vineyards. Mm -hmm. In the first moment, they started with the vines that they brought from, from Veneto region. It was not such a good result that they found in that moment. So they started developing the, the American varieties. Mm -hmm. The hybrid varieties, the hybrid like varieties. Isabella. Exactly, exactly. And late in history, they came back. We always had the, the Vitis vinifera, or the, 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 the uh, European varieties, mm -hmm. traditional one. But American varieties took a, a, a more important place. And step by step, those people and my 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 father, my grand uh, my my grandfather, mm -hmm. they understood the technical part, and in, and through this history, they started to replant those uh, European vitis vinifera okay. varieties. So. The history is, it, it's a long history for Brazil. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you compare to traditional wine producers, it's just a short. But I think that to have 100, 106 years of history, of wine history, let's say, mm -hmm. in Brazil, is something really, really special and that must be told and, and, and spread to, to, to people mm -hmm. that love this 
this world of, of wine. Absolutely. And what's really nice is the fact that your family history entwines with all these changes mm -hmm. in the wine region and in the, the wine industry. So starting from smaller producers, each making their own wine, drinking it, eating their pasta, yeah. everyone's still speaking their dialect of Italian. And now we're in a modern Brazilian area of wine. Yeah. So everyone's got the different trellising systems and working again with Vitis Vinifera. Um, and one of the things that's really blossomed not only in, in Salton but also in Brazil, in Brazil. is the bubbly. It's yes. exploded in a puff of bubbles everywhere. Yes. And so the first wine that we're going to try is your Brut, which yes. is, this yes. one's yes. made Brazil from, intensive brut. which variety is So it's, it's made from, from Glera. Which is the Prosecco grape. It's which <laughs> the Prosecco grape, exactly. With the Sharma method. Mm. So the, the, the big things that we, we could see in the, in the visit. And the, the main point here is to keep this freshness mm. that we find naturally in this region. This is the main point. To keep the freshness in the mouth of the acidity, but also the freshness in the nose. Mm. With all these fruits that we have mentioned, uh, uh, fresh, fresh uh, white fruits. So this is the, 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 the common point, let's say, in Brazilian sparkling wine. Mm -hmm. Not for, just for our labels, but for all the, 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 the winers that are developing more and more and more sparkling wine. And as you said, Brazilian, Brazilian people had already recognized the quality of Brazilian sparkling wine. Mm -hmm. This is established. And now we are having excellent results abroad and developing more and more and showing people more and more, especially the sparkling wine, mm -hmm. but also the steel wine. Absolutely, are... which we'll move on to in a second, but just to summarize, the sparkling is exciting here because you've got this fresh, fruity, charmat mm -hmm. method, which yeah. is like what we make, you know, Prosecco from and, and all those kind of classic everyday bubblies that you could enjoy for breakfast, <laughs> as, <laughs> no well, as well as dinner. <laughs> Um, but also here you've got, you know, more champenois, champagne style sparklings as well. Style with the traditional method, but also with the Sharma method mm -hmm. as the sparkling that we have, we have tried that we keep for 12 months inside the big tank. Mm -hmm. So we are more and more trying different things, innovating and looking for the best expression of all these, all those varieties here from mm -hmm. Serra Gaúcha in our, in our sparkling wine. So the potential, it's really big, uh -huh. let's say like that. And Brazil is really big, and so <laughs> the potential is even bigger. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Of course, for sure. So while the sparkling is exploding by itself in lots of different formats, um, let's talk a little bit about the wine that you produce here. Uh, so this one is, well, this is actually named after your generations. So yes, it's talking exactly. about the importance Southern of your generations, yeah. family history. But this one is a blend of four different grapes. Yes. What, what have we got in here? So we have Cabernet Sauvignon, Malbec, Merlot and Cabernet Franc. Uh -huh. So we are moving from a really fresh uh -huh. <laughs> wine to uh, the, the total opposite, a, a structured wine, a oaked wine. Mm. So here we have the French, the French uh, uh, oak barrels during one year, new barrels. So the, 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 the power of this wine is totally mm -hmm. total different. And as you mentioned, Southern Generations, this is a really important not for not just for the quality of the wine or this care mm. that we take during the winemaking but also for the historical could uh -huh. I say, <laughs> part or the uh, emotion that it brings with with it mm -hmm. so for us southern generations is a, a really a really important project that we have here in in the winery fantastic and talking about this wine i mean all these grapes are French. <laughs> yes. Um, and Cabernet Franc was actually one of the most planted grapes here in, in Brazil um, to be superseded by Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon yes. later. Uh, but this is not what you'd expect from a new world 
style of Bordeaux grapes, is mm -hmm. it? I mean, this has, what, how would you describe the style of Brazilian reds and blends? How is it different to our neighbors in Chile and Argentina, for example? Yes, this, it, we, we can say that we have the ABC, as mm -hmm. we like to, to, to play, the Argentina, Brazil, and Chile. But especially Brazil in, this, in these three countries, it has particular sorry particularity. Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> that are really are really different from mm. the new world style. I think this is a good this wine is a good example of that. That we are really in the old world wine world style, more the Bordeaux blend with the, the, the French oak, the same kind of winemaking, the same kind of élevage mm. as they, they, they like to, to tell. So in Brazil, I, I, I couldn't, personally, I couldn't establish, oh, it's a new world or it's an old world style. Actually, there is this flexibility. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can make both kinds. We are not just focused in one style because we are from New World. No, you are trying to express the best that we can make here. It's not focused in one or other style. Mm -hmm. It's more the point to make the best as we from can here. from here. And exactly. right here, I mean, in terms of climate, what are the big differences that we're looking at? I mean, this is not, it sounds like it's raining, it's not right now, <laughs> but it's always raining here. Yes. We're in a very different climate. So how does the climate affect the, the wines that we'll be drinking? So the, 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 the main difficulty that we have here in, in Serra Gaucha region is, as you mentioned, the rain. And that's why we can develop here such amazing sparkling mm -hmm. wine, because the, the ripeness of the grape is not as completed, let's say, as we can get, for example, in Mendoza. Mm -hmm. But in a different way, we have Campanha Gaúcha, that is a totally different region. Here in Serra Gaúcha, we are in a hilly, mm -hmm. with lots of rain, lots of humidity, natural acidity. Mm -hmm. And natural acidity, great for bubbly. Wonderful. <laughs> and in Campanha Gaúcha, we are almost in the opposite. Mm -hmm. We are in a flat region, totally di different kind of soil, is more a sandy soil. We have more amount of hours of sun, mm -hmm. so the ripeness, it will be totally different. So we are focusing for, especially for the red, for the red wines to be developed in Campanha Gaúcha. Mm -hmm. They structure the full body red wines. Here in Serra, we can develop the fresh red wine, the fresh mm -hmm. um, white wine, and of course, the fresh sparkling wine. Mm -hmm. But if we need to focus, if we need to divide, to establish, I would say that, that Serra Gaúcha is a wonderful and perfect region to, de to develop more and more the sparkling. And Campania, we, can, we have more flexibility, of course. We mm -hmm. can also develop uh, wonderful grapes to, to, to make sparkling. But if you want that full-bodied wine, it will be better to, to focus in that. To make your reds there. Exactly. And this is just the tip of the iceberg for Brazil, isn't it? Because even though you've got a history, a long history of winemaking, it's relatively new. It's a modern industry. Yes. You're playing with lots of different grape varieties, different regions. So we'll come back and we talk about it in 10 years. And I'm sure we're going to have totally different wines totally to Totally different <laughs> wines. I'm sure of that because even, as you said, if we, if we have 106 years, Compared to the world, it's a really recent mm. history. And we are learning and learning, and we need to learn a lot to develop, and this is the point, to develop step by step better wines, better sparkling wines that to show and to offer, to make uh, the industry grow and, and, and offer better wines and, mm -hmm. and offer and be known around the world 
as as a wine a wine country. Yeah, wine producer, as well as football and samba and all the rest. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I'm going to have a glass of bubbly. Okay, you pick. Let's, you can I have will, it. I will. Cheers. Saúde. Saúde. Thank you very much.